6 e 20 Sabes quando é a última... Um, volta. Quando é voltar? É a 1 e 20 A 1 e 20? 1 e 20, sim E é 20 minutos cada vez? Ou... 10 minutos 10 minutos? Ah, 10 uau. minutos, ótimo, okay, obrigado okay. So, anytime Você quer iniciar Ok Do you think it's cheap? I, I thought so, but I don't really have a very good grasp on money. So it was six. Uh, so <laughs> you want to get in there? We got a bit of a height height difference. Here. So it was six euros and twenty cents for two of us to go there and back. And Izzy is not his class is an adult. So I think kids are like twelve and under. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you think so. Hi, my name is Nick Robinson and I've been living in the Algarve for 22 years and I can help you relocate to the Algarve. So get in touch with me on algarveaddicts.com and we can refer you to the right professionals. Now today, Isabella, my daughter and I are on a mission. We've got to get across this river and this is the Tejo River, which is in between South Lisbon and, uh, well, actually not South Lisbon, the Margeng Sul and Lisbon proper. Okay, so we just bought tickets and like you see, it's one euro 55 per person to get across the river one way. So it's six bucks and 20 cents for two of us to go there and back. And now we do have a time limit. So we've got to get to this Roman museum by 6 p.m. And it's currently, the clock is ticking. So let's hurry up and do it, okay? <laughs> we've got to get over there. So we made it, or kinda. Take note of this, the Google Maps entry says it closes at 6 p.m., which it does, but they won't let anyone in from 5.30 p.m. because obviously it's a museum and you've got to walk around like the Roman, Roman Museum. Thankfully, they, could, they said that we could go and visit the Roman theater over the road. We did. We found the vomitorium. Oh my God. Check these columns. Do you reckon these are exactly where they were 2,000 years ago? No, some of them have been moved. I think some of them might be, but I don't think all of them now. Yeah? Like, you see, there's a big hole in the ground. From where one must have been taken out of. Ah, that is a smart piece of deduction. Oh, yeah. So look, there's the amphitheater over here. Obviously, this drawing here is recreating a bit of it. So what do you think happened in this amphitheater? Probably, like, um, what are they called? Christians burned no. at the stake. <laughs> no. What I was going to say is like, um, the fighters? What are they? Gladiators. The gladiators. Like yeah. Fighting animals and stuff. And like, uh, they were very into theater, I think. Yes. Like with the weird masks and all It's probably some of that. The Romans were definitely into a lot of violence and war and sacrificial stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't laugh. It's pretty it. serious. This is probably what they think it used to look like. Basin for collection of wastewater. 
the lower areas of the stage, holes for setting poles that allowed the curtain to be moved up and down, and a water drain. So it's all about the theater. Izzy, come look, there's a vomitorium. Oh my god. What is the vomitorium? It's the entrance to the seating area. Oh. The fascinating thing about archaeology around these parts is that it's still very much a living science. Only a few years ago, in 2014, a groundbreaking discovery was made that determined that the Phoenicians actually lived in Lisbon and didn't just set up camp while passing through. There are so many digs around and about the country that are revealing loads of history that we thought had already been written. Here's a quick sequence in case you're not a history student. Originally, the Celts and pre-Celtic people settled in the area around Lisbon. 800 to 600 BC, Phoenician and Greek trading posts were established in the area. And then the Carthaginians took over. In 205 BC, the Carthaginians were defeated by the Romans in the Second Punic War. In 500 AD, the Visigoths swept into the vacuum created by the demise of the Roman Empire. And after 300 years of just absolute mess and plunder, in 714 AD, the Moors conquered Lisbon. In 1147, the Portuguese took over Lisbon and ruled it from then in, and it's been the longest ruled nation in the world ever since then. Recent archaeological data show that Lisbon grew around a pre-Roman settlement on the hill of the Castelo de São Jorge. The basic structure of the Roman city of Olisipu, stemming from the Phoenician Alice Ubu, meaning safe harbour, is evidenced by the following finds. The Roman Forum, the Roman Theatre, the Roman Circus where they used to race around in their chariots and, and, and the like, the Roman Necropolis or the cemetery, and the industrial belt down near the port, which I'll get into in a bit. A Roman wall, there's actually a section of the Roman wall in this building, and the Roman port, of which no or little remains have been found, but it's obviously deduced that it's down next to the river. The best way to see all these incredible sites is by going on a tour. And there's a perfect tour on getyourguide.com, so I'll link that in the description. Olisipo in Roman times was an important trading center linking the northern countries with the Mediterranean Sea. Its main products were garum, a fish sauce considered a luxury, and it doesn't sound like it is actually that nice. I would imagine it'd be something like anchovets fish paste. Salt was also massive, and the Lusitanian horses renowned in antiquity. Salt was an interesting Roman thing, and that's apparently where the word uh, salario or salary comes from, because they used to pay people in salt. <laughs> so Izzy and I ambled down the hill now with a lot less time pressure on. And, uh, you know, I jumped into a, a bar just to check it out, because it looked really interesting, and asked them if they were open, and then promptly left. <laughs> what are you saying? Ah, come on. Anyway, we found ourselves in the square, which was the site of the okay, old Roman so Forum. One, Posed for a few two, pictures. Three elsies. <laughs> and then we had a fantastic little, little drink, and headed back to the south side. Yeah, isn't they really strong? It's a caipirinha. Yeah, it's caipirinha. So this is Dua Lipa, isn't it? It is Dua Lipa. Oh my gosh, we were there last night. We heard the song live last night. What? That's so cool. <laughs> wow, that was a crazy night last night. I mean, imagine me, 52 years old and all these 14 year old screaming kids everywhere going, yay, Dua Lipa. <laughs> it was uh, something that, yeah, just did it for my daughter, shame. But it was, uh, it was quite fun. Now listen, Lisbon, if you learn about the history of a place, any place, it obviously is going to add a lot more value to your visit. It really is. 
Um, and there's so much, because Lisbon's such a fascinating place, there's so much to it and there's so much history, as I've discussed briefly, that if you'd like to find more about it, just check out this book. It's called Queen of the Seas that I'm reading at the moment, all about Lisbon. And it's really interesting. There's tons of amazing stories about the past. And, you know, kings strolling through the streets with tigers and elephants and, oh, mad. Been a lot of wealth happening in Lisbon. So also um, another resource that you can check out, if you're in the Algarve, check out the Algarve History Association. I managed to interview the president of him on my podcast years ago, and he was extremely informative, and he still does quite a few talks around. So, you know, jump onto Algarve History Association. Their website is in the description below, as is a link to that book. Please buy that book through my Amazon link, because I do get a little bit of a kickback, so I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, guys, uh, if you have any questions about Lisbon, put them down in the comments. If I can't answer them, then hopefully somebody else cool, uh, would because there are tons of really, really cool Portuguese people in the comments as well, and they are helping us out as well. So thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next week. Algarve Addicts.com